Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about proxy variables, what makes a good proxy, and how we use them. This will be our final video on regression, and at the end of the video I will wrap everything up as well. In the previous video we talked about using control variables in a regression. We discussed the ideal solution to the omitted variable problem being that we find all of the possible omitted variables and turn them into controls by putting them in the regression. This solution, though, is usually not practical, because there's some variables that we simply don't have access to. Rather than just give up, though, proxy variables provide a solution. A proxy variable is a variable that we put in the regression in place of an omitted variable that we couldn't find. Proxies are not the same as the omitted variable that they are replacing, but what they can do is eliminate the endogeneity, or at least significantly reduce the endogeneity caused by the omitted variable. It still doesn't allow us to estimate the effect of the omitted variable, but usually we don't actually care about that. Controls and proxies are there to help us establish causality for the variables we do care about. There are three main assumptions that we need to be in place for a proxy to be considered a good proxy. Number one, the proxy needs to be correlated with the omitted variable that we're trying to replace. Number two, if the omitted variable could have been in the regression, there would be no endogeneity. And number three, the part of the omitted variable unexplained by the proxy is uncorrelated with all explanatory variables, including the proxy itself. I'm going to be going through and explaining each of these three points as we go through an example. We are going to return to the Mincer equation that we used earlier, wage equals beta naught plus beta one education, where our education variable is the number of years of completed education. As we discussed before, ability is an omitted variable here because ability is correlated with both years of education and with wage. Unfortunately, though, ability is difficult to measure. Ability is more of an abstract concept that we can't exactly measure. So there's no way to fully control for ability. What we can do, though, is find a proxy for ability. Suppose that we have IQ test scores, and we think that there is a relationship between ability and IQ. Specifically, this equation right here, where we have ability equals gamma naught plus gamma one IQ plus epsilon A. What we're saying here is that ability is explained in part by IQ, that's the gamma one, but not fully by IQ. The rest of ability comes from epsilon A. We might think about IQ kind of as a book smart measure, but that's not the only part of ability that's out there. And what exactly ability means for you is dependent on the job that you're trying to do. So Epsilon might have things like emotional intelligence, it could be physical strength, it could be all kinds of things that are not part of IQ. Before we move on, I want to note that in this equation, I'm using gammas as the parameters, just to make it clear that these are not the same as the betas in the top regression, but I could have picked any Greek letters there, it doesn't really matter. Let's use this example to go through our three assumptions about what makes a good proxy. The first one, the proxy is correlated with the omitted variable. Remember that the job of the proxy is to stand in for the omitted variable in the regression. If the proxy is not correlated with the omitted variable, then it can't really do that. In a mathematical sense, what we need to be true is that in this second equation here, gamma one needs to be non-zero. If gamma one were zero, then there's no relationship between IQ and ability, and IQ is useless as a proxy. So we need that to be a non-zero number. This is the first and most basic requirement of a proxy. Number two, if the omitted variable could have been in the regression, there would be no endogeneity. So this is saying that in the ideal situation where we would be able to actually find ability and put it in the regression, then we would have no endogeneity there. That is to say, in the equation that I've written here, with ability actually in the equation, epsilon is uncorrelated with education and ability. This actually doesn't have anything to do with the proxy itself. This is more about the assumptions of the underlying DGP. This assumption would be violated if there were some other omitted variables out there other than ability. So this is essentially saying that we have to control for everything that is causing a problem. Assumption number three is that the part of the omitted variable unexplained by the proxy is uncorrelated with all explanatory variables, including the proxy. This, I think, is the trickiest one of the bunch. 
and requires the most explanation. Breaking this down with our example, we have that hypothetical relationship between ability and IQ. Remember that epsilon a in this equation is all of the parts of ability that are not explained by IQ. This is where it's really important to remember that IQ and ability are not the same. And when we put IQ into our regression, we are only controlling for part of ability, the part of ability that it can be explained by IQ. But of course, there's plenty of other parts of ability that are still out there. And if that portion of ability, those other factors of ability that aren't IQ, are correlated with education, then we have only gotten rid of part of the endogeneity. We've only eliminated part of the bias. And we've left some bias still out there. For this reason, sometimes we need to have multiple proxies to take care of all of these problems. Epsilon A should also not be correlated with IQ because if it was, then we're putting a new variable into the equation that has its own endogeneity problem. If we're looking at a job that the only other factor of ability is, say, physical strength, then we would probably be okay here because education and physical strength are probably not correlated with each other. But if these jobs required something of ability that was correlated with education, then we would still have a problem. Now we'll go back to our data set wages and implement IQ as a proxy variable. Remember from the video on control variables, we ran two regressions. We ran wage on education, and then we added experience as a control, and we looked at how adding experience removes some bias from the model. But there still could be bias out there, particularly caused by the omitted variable of ability. So we're going to take that model and we're going to add IQ into that. For the dependent variable, I will select wage. For the explanatory variables, I will select education, experience, and IQ. First, we notice that the coefficient estimate for IQ is positive, meaning that people with a higher IQ tend to have higher wages. Now look what has happened to the estimate for the education coefficient. It's gone down from $76 to $58 per year of education. By adding IQ, we have removed a positive bias. Why does this happen? Well, remember that IQ is positively correlated with education. People with a higher measured intelligence are going to generally be more successful in education, but they're also going to be better at their jobs. So a positive times a positive would be a positive bias. By not including ability, now proxied for by IQ, we overestimated the effect of education. Since the educated people were smarter, it made it look like being educated was more valuable than it really is. Looking at the experience coefficient, we now have about 17.4. Compared to before, we had about 17.6, so almost no change there. What this suggests is that IQ and experience are pretty much uncorrelated. Let's return to our motivating example from the first video in this series. There we looked at the relationship between the number of pirates in the world and the average global temperature. And we saw that there's a correlation here. The fewer pirates there are, the higher the temperature. Now we have the tools to think about why we might see this relationship. We can write out a regression equation. Temperature equals beta naught plus beta one times pirates plus epsilon. We can now think about what's in the epsilon. What are the different things that have caused global warming to happen? Well, since 1820, there's been a significant amount of industrialization in the world that has led to more CO2 emissions that have led to higher temperatures. But at the same time, industrialization came along with the introduction of modern navies who could hunt down the pirates. So it's not that pirates have a causal relationship with temperature. It's that pirates is correlated with something that's also correlated with temperature. So pirates are an endogenous variable. Understanding the omitted variable problem is one of the most important things I want you to take away from these lectures. And an understanding of regression analysis is not complete without it. In these last few videos, we have covered what the omitted variable problem is, why it causes a problem, and we've thought about what is the sign of the bias that we're going to get. And then we've looked at two different strategies we can use to control endogeneity, 
control variables, and proxy variables. These are the two most basic tools in the toolkit of the regression analyst. And they're certainly a good start. In practice, there are many other more advanced tools that we use, but these aren't enough to get us started. And this is where our brief study of regression ends. The idea here has not been to replace a full course on econometrics, and I certainly recommend that if this has whetted your appetite. But what we have done is expose you to the basics, as well as the more advanced topic of omitted variables and what we can do about them. And in some ways, I have taught you just enough to be dangerous. There is a lot of bad regressions out there. And one thing I want you to get out of this is the ability to spot them. To be mindful of the omitted variable problem and call it out where you see it. There's a lot more to deciding whether or not a regression is a good one or not than looking at r squared. If somebody is trying to make a causal interpretation, we have to think about omitted variables. Whether or not that you actually end up doing data analysis in your job, you'll almost certainly encounter other people who do. And to be able to have the basic tools to communicate about that and understand data analysis that somebody is bringing to you is extremely valuable in business. And I hope that you've been able to get a little bit of a deeper understanding of what's going on in a regression. Regression is not magic, it's just math. But remember that although math underlies it all, there's still a very human element to it, to be able to think through the interpretation of a regression. I'll wrap up here by recommending a few great books on econometrics. First one is Predictive Analytics for Business Strategy, which I based some of our notes here on. This is a new book that is very user-friendly and quite business-oriented in its approach. Second one is Introductory Econometrics, A Modern Approach. This is one of the gold standard textbooks for starting out in econometrics. It has pretty much everything you need and is full of examples, but also goes into the math where it needs to. These first two books are both extensive textbooks, whereas the other two books here by Angris and Pishka are shorter, more narrative-focused books. Mastering Metrics is a great book for beginners getting started with thinking about regression and causality. And then Mostly Harmless Econometrics is their other more advanced book that is a great practitioner's guide to doing applied econometrics. Whereas the Wildridge textbook is written by an econometrician who thinks about the theory behind it, Angrist and Pishka are practitioners. They are applied economists who use econometrics in their research, just like I do. That's all I have for you for now. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.